And now I'll turn over to Commissioner Zapata to do a brief introduction. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Thank you so much for uh, coming out this Saturday. I really appreciate it. And I just want to thank Eric and Jess who put in so much work and all their staff. They deserve a round of applause, so let's, let's give them a nice round of applause. Thank you so much for all the help and putting this together. I also want to thank my staff for here. I see Bianca, Bibi. I know Ingrid's running around back there. Alvaro, staff is there, and some of our interns, so thank you very much. I appreciate all the help. You know, like Eric said, you know, this idea, you know, I, I, I grew up here. Uh, I've been living out here, I don't know, 35, 36 years now. And it's amazing how this area has changed. And I, the one thing that I've always noticed is it didn't change because of any plan or um, you know, any plan or any vision that this community had. It just kind of happened organically. Uh, what was in the best interest of the property owners at the time and what, what the commercial market was uh, demanding at the time. So that's what we've got and that's what... You know, what we, we now refer to as the West End, and when I talk about the West End, uh, we're trying to rebrand ourselves. And, uh, I'm gonna, we're going to have a little video here that, that is going to be a part of that. We're talking about the area west of the Turnpike, uh, from 8th Street to about 184th Street. Uh, and I'm not the only commissioner in that area, but my district is entirely in that area. I am the only commissioner who has his entire district in that area. And I think it's important for us to have a real clear vision and future of where we want to go as a community. What is important to us? What's important to your children? What do you want this community to look like 10, 15, 20 years from now? So, uh, you know, when you think about that and you look at the, the ge geography, and by the way, the West End has about 320,000 people, uh, a median household income of $62,000, which is about $20,000 higher than the, than the county average. You see incredible potential. What we're missing is a plan, a vision. And that's what, this is one of the first steps we want to take. And I, I need to thank Bernardo, who's my former chief of staff, who's uh, now with, uh, with FDX. He really was the driver of this, and he's the one who kind of put the, the, the idea in my head uh, to do this. Because when you think about Kendall Drive, I think all of us see Kendall Drive as a, the main corridor. Uh, and if you think of it in the terms of an axis, what are the axis of this West End area? It's 137th Avenue and, uh, and Kendall Drive. So in Kendall Drive, we have some very unique opportunities, especially in the western part. It's the only part of Kendall that has any land remaining, uh, some of it inside the UDB and uh, some of it directly outside. But I felt it's the one place where we could all kind of come together and, and, and really be able to do something unique. And that's what we're all tasked here to do, to really be take that first step in creating that vision, that idea, that, that, that you know, um, a, that model of what we're going to create for the future, what we want, you know, what we want to have. Just let your imagination be as creative as you could possibly be. Because what I what I tell folks is that um, there's a trend, you know, in the United States. You know, the suburbs to a certain degree are losing their their uh, their cachet. You know, the suburbs were great during the, the end of the 20th century, but now you see a lot of fo people focused on the urban core. As people and as there more attraction to the urban core, what do we do in the suburbs that keeps people interested in the suburbs. How do we retrofit those suburbs to become the suburbs of the future? And we've been, in my office and I have talked to a lot of folks and I've talked a lot with the county folks. How do we create that vision for the future? How do we create the suburbs of the future? And how do we create a western, you know, a part of Dade County, a vibrant community for our children a, and for future generations? And, and for us, you know, I, you know, a lot of us will retire out here. You know, I've, uh, like I was telling, joking with some folks earlier, I've already kind of picked out my room. Uh, out of West Kendall Baptist Hospital that, you know, my last few days I have a nice vision. And the one thing I want to be able to do during my last few hours on earth is look out that window and say, damn, this looks great. And I'm glad to have been a, a small piece of it. So anyway, I want to thank you all. We have a little video here. It's a work in progress. I want you to look at it. Uh, and I want you to give us some feedback on how we can make it better. But it's uh, one of the, the branding tools we're going to use to create a new image uh, for this community. So thank you very much. Not Florida City, we are. The folks who live out here, we are the closest community to the Everglades. So I think one of the things we could also take pride in is the environment. So we look forward to being a very, um, also in the plans that we're trying to uh, you know, incorporate into everything we do is being a very sustainable city, a very green city, uh, you know, and, and creating that kind of image for ourselves. So I think that's where, where the value for this community will lie in the future. And you know, we're just West Kendall, I'll talk about West Kendall Hospital. Uh, you know, they're a platinum lead uh, certified hospital, first in the state. So I, I think we have there, that's, that'll be the, the starting point. We're trying to do the same thing with our office, not platinum, but, but close to it. But keep that in mind. Keep all those concepts in mind as you as you move forward. So again, thank you very much. Uh, you know, enjoy. I'm gonna have to leave a little early. I actually coach a soccer team of five-year-olds. So I gotta be out of here like at 1220. Without those five-year-olds will tear me apart. So uh, anyway, I'll be here for most of the time. But thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Sabata. That was, that's the first I've seen the video, and that's certainly a, a, a great way to start the vision for the future of Kendall. Um, 
just as a brief presentation, this is the presentation is not the main purpose of this workshop. The workshop is to listen to you, the residents, uh, and the property owners, and people who are interested in West Kendall. Um, but we, we do need to, need to over, go on, through an overview of, uh, of the planning process so you're familiar with uh, how, how the, the process is going to move forward. Um, these planning processes, are, we call them uh, small area plans. Uh, of course, this area is not small, but that's just what they're called. And, and there's a procedure in the code that we have to follow. And we've been doing that with public notice, uh, advertisements in the newspaper, and so on. And I'm sure many of you may have gotten a postcard in the mail. So that's an important part of how we reach out to the community and make sure that the community is involved uh, as the planning process goes forward. Um, and whenever we talk about planning, we have to make reference to the comprehensive plan. The county has had a comprehensive plan in effect since about 1975, and it actually goes even further than that, back into the uh, early 1960s. Um, but we have to be consistent with our planning efforts with the overall comprehensive plan of the county. Uh, and this is the land use map, which is a small part of the, the, the whole comprehensive plan. Um, and of course, uh, can anybody see where Kendall is on the, on the map? It's, we are right about there. Uh, this is Kendall Drive right here. Here's uh, the Dayland area, uh, the 874 Expressway, the Turnpike, and of course the urban development boundary line. And we're gonna be talking about more about that in a, in a, in a minute. Um, one of the other important planning things that have been going on in the county are the uh, transit corridors, uh, of which Kendall is one. Um, this is the orange line there, and you may have uh, use the Kendall Cruiser, which uh, Miami Day Transit has been operating for a few years now as the express bus service along Kendall uh, to take you to the big land and the Metro Rail. Um, and along with these uh, transit corridors, the, the yellow circles are urban centers. And urban centers are uh, planning tools that we can use to focus development and intensity around nodes of, uh, of importance in the county. And in the study area that we're in, uh, there are two uh, urban centers, one at 137th Avenue, and one at the uh, Kendall Town Center at 167th Avenue where the, the West Kendall Baptist Hospital is located. Um, if you're not familiar, some of these previous planning efforts similar to this one uh, include the downtown Kendall uh, planning study which began in uh, 1998, uh, almost uh, 15, 15 or so years ago. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with the development that has occurred uh, over the last 10 years or so. Uh, the, the, uh, the condominiums, the new uh, mixed-use developments on the south side of uh, Kendall Drive uh, across from Dayland. Um, so this is one of our success stories that the, the planning efforts have actually come, in, come to life in three dimensions. And uh, you know, we're very pleased with the quality of development that has occurred. Uh, one of the more recent planning projects is the Palmer Lake area, which is immediately east of the airport, uh, adjacent to the Intermodal Center. Uh, if you've taken the new Metrorail extension into the airport, that's located right there. This is the new rail car center. Uh, so the Palmer Lake project was looking at the area east of the, uh, the Intermodal Center uh, to see the future of the area, which is really right now is a lot of vacant property and, and under, underdeveloped land. And uh, this is the vision that, that was developed from the, uh, from the planning process. And uh, you know, we, we really anticipate over the next 10 or 15 years uh, it probably won't look exactly like this, but it may look very similar to this in the future. So our job here now is to try and imagine the future of this area, uh, the West Kendall Corridor from 137th Avenue to Chrome Avenue. Um, of course, we are right about here at the, at the high school. This is Hammocks Boulevard. This is Kendall Drive. Uh, we're looking mainly north and south of Kendall for about a half a mile from 137th Avenue to Chrome, uh, including the area in the urban expansion area. This is the urban development boundary uh, where urban development is not permitted right now. Um, however, it is within the expansion area which the comprehensive plan uh, has targeted as if the urban development boundary is gonna be moved in the next 10 or 15 years, it should be moved in this area and not further south in the Redland area or something like that. Um, so this is, this is our, the focus of our study area, of this project today. Um, and just an overview, and I know the commissioner mentioned uh, uh, some facts about the study area, uh, or West Kendall in general. Um, this, uh, this, our study area in particular is 4.3 square miles, with a population of about 32,000, uh, 213 acres vacant. I think it's mainly the, the Kendall Town Center. Um, 
uh, 600 or so acres of single family residential, two, uh, about 300 acres of multifamily residential, 200 acres or so of commercial development, 147 acres of lakes, 100 acres of parks, which is pretty good, and the area outside the urban development boundary is mainly agriculture, and that's about 600 acres. Um, so just going back and looking at the history of this corridor, uh, this is an aerial photograph from 1975, and you can see the development. This is, this is Kendall Drive here on the south side of Kendall in 1975. There was, there was nothing uh, except agriculture. Um, this is uh, 157th Avenue there. So the hammocks wasn't there. Uh, we're right about here right now. And as you can see in 1975, it was row crops. Uh, just 10 years later, um, you can see the south side of Kendall Drive. Um, it's almost completely developed. You can see this is the hammocks. I'm sorry, this is Kings Meadow under construction. This is the hammocks here under construction. Um, and uh, you can see the urban development boundary in 1985 it was at 157th Avenue. So we're right about here today. And of course, this is 2013 aerial, so this is from last year. Um, again, Kendall is built out, and uh, there's very little uh, vacant land, uh, but we're still looking at the future of the area because nothing is static, everything changes. Um, so it's, despite the fact that things are completed, it's not completed, it's never completed. And uh, so this is our job today, is to look at the future of the area. Um, so a few of the things that we want to focus on uh, is creating a vision of the future. Um, what do we want to see here as Kendall changes? And even though there's no vacant land, it doesn't matter, things will change. Um, and how, how we're asking you to tell us how the change should happen. Um, and do we want to transform West Kendall into a destination? As you saw the video, uh, that's, that's certainly a desire. Um, enhanced livability, everybody wants to see that. Uh, additional transportation options, everybody knows transportation is an issue out here. Um, and then encouraging a, a better mix of uses because really all we have now is, is residential and, and commercial that serves the residential area, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, does anybody know where this is? No, this is Kendall and, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make it sound like that. Uh, this is um, this is 167th Avenue toward, looking towards Kendall Drive. That's Kendall Drive in the distance there. The, the Baptist Hospital is right about here. Uh, so this is where the Kendall Town Center was supposed to be built. And uh, the developers could, of course, they could build their project starting tomorrow, but they haven't. And, and so we should look at the area and see uh, what your vision is for the future. Is it, is it the same as, as uh, is what was proposed in the past. Um, the last plan that was approved in this area actually dates from 2003, so it's already 10 years old. Um, so is that is that still valid? You know, who knows? Um, and this is an aerial photo. You can see the Baptist Hospital right uh, off the off the view there. Um, another thing to consider is the, uh, the proposed extension or the potential extension of the 836 Expressway, uh, which is an MDX uh, Expressway Authority project. Um, this is the end of A36 up here uh, at uh, north of Tamiami Trail. Um, they're beginning a study, a five-year study, uh, to look at extending the A36 somewhere into the Kendall area, maybe extending it to Kendall Drive, maybe extending it down to the airport area, Tamiami Airport. Uh, so that's something else to consider for the future of the area. And then, of course, the urban development boundary. As I mentioned, the, the boundary now uh, ends at about 167th Avenue. Um, this is actually, this is Kendall and 167th Avenue here looking uh, to the northwest. So this is the, the literal bound, boundary line is located right here. Um, so since this is in the expansion area, we need to ask, what do you want to see for the future of, of the, uh, the area outside the urban belt boundary within the expansion area? Do we want to see more of what we already have or do we want to see something different? Uh, it's a very important question and we have to ask the question. Um, so now I'm going to turn it over to Shalinder Singh, the uh, supervisor for the uh, Urban Design Center, and he's going to walk us through the actual workshop process. We're, we're going to ask you to tell us uh, what your vision for the future is. Shalinder, thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you. And uh, it's 
great to see so many people out on a Saturday. That always works very well for an area. Uh, I'm going to walk you real quick through the, the actual procurement process, what are we going to be doing today. Uh, as you sit around the tables. We have, this is where we are right now. We've kind of gone over the little overview of the area, what's where. Uh, we have the presentation so that you guys know exactly what is the study area looking at and what are some of the issues that might be, uh, you know, doing there. So before we you know, start, there are going to be some rules, all right? Uh, please sign your name on, the, on the, the sheet itself because remember, these these maps that you have here are historic. They, they are the ones that are going to stay long uh, into, you know, later on as a record, as, as, uh, as part of a historic thing that's happening today. No speeches, all right? Please, this is the time to like draw. If you don't want to draw, uh, you like to write, write it down. Give us your ideas. Let the designers uh, and the facilitator on your tables know exactly how you want this area to, to, to be. And I give you the pencil, that's exactly what I meant, but by that, I don't mean for the neighbor with the pencil, but you know, put it down, put it, write it down, draw it, how it works. And so just don't say it, draw it. And today, no idea is a bad idea. Just for today, let's not get caught up too much about uh, funding, about how or where it can happen from. Today, it's just we want to have a lot of good visual ideas for the future. Like I said, just for today, don't think about funding. And have fun, because this is probably the most fun public meeting, public uh, you know, uh, workshop that you'll go to, and you will have a lot of fun. By the way, how many people know what a charrette means? It's just the word where the charrette comes from. All right, so a lot of people. Charette actually is a French word. It comes from the, from the 19th century. It is the name of a cart. It's the, the actual charrette means a cart. A cart that was used in the 19th century uh, uh, art students' class when they were taking the big maps that were to be displayed in, into an area. And they would just get into the cart itself and they would keep working until the last minute. And so that intense process has been kind of borrowed for this process. Now it's very interesting to know that charrette uh, is the name of the same card that was also used to take citizens to the guillotine. <laughs> this is not that process. <laughs> so, after this, as you can see, you are, you know, you are, there are maps. You know, we are going to be all sitting out there. This is actually uh, you know, pictures from the East Campbell Charette. And as you can see, there is one facilitator on each table. But the job of the, today, their job is not to draw. Or, or, you know, you are the ones that are gonna, they're going to help you kind of identify where's what to, to locate you. And if you have their questions, they can help you with that. And they'll help you even put it down if, if, if you need to. But today, it's your day, right? Put down ideas. Make sure, uh, like I said, if you don't want to draw, still grab a pen and write it if you have to on the side or whatever. But that's what we're going to do for the next an hour or so. Um, get as many ideas as, as into the maps. And I see a lot of kids today, this is great. Kids have some of the best ideas, trust me. They are the ones that do not drive. So they look at planning a completely different process about walkability, pedestrian, and stuff like that. So that's good. We'll probably now run one uh, ladder that can just work with the kids uh, on that table. Uh, and then after, after a, a little bit of that process, we're going to have those maps up uh, uh, on the walls so that we can each table can present their ideas, okay? It can be just one person from the, the table. It, it's not going to be the designer. It's not going to be the facilitator. It has to be one of you, people from the area. It could be just one of you, two of you, or the whole table can come up here and talk about it. This is very important because this is where we kind of we want to see what each table, because you are looking at exactly the same map. So for each area or concern, there could be either a lot of alternatives from different tables or there could be a consensus. So this is very important. So that is going to happen at the end of the... Uh, of the uh, and then we uh, designers are going to be taking all these maps, as you can see, on, on the wall. And we're going to be using these, these maps to create more precise drawings. And we are not going to go back to our offices. We're going to be here all week. Uh, this is the address we're going to be at for the rest of the week. And you can, you're more than welcome to stop by during the week. Make sure whatever you tell us today, we're taking care of that. And if there's anything, and you know, sometimes it happens, you get back, go back home, and you say, wait, I, I, I thought about that great idea too, which I didn't share. Come back. It is, it's still an open process. We, we all week we're going to try to put all those ideas in. So come back. There are a lot of people, I'm sure, your neighbors that couldn't make it here today. Let them know that we are, you know, the designers are going to be still going to be there to stop by. We're going to try and 
stay as long as possible in the evening so that you can you can come after work, etc. So we're going to take all that and work, and then we'll probably come back on. The, I, I don't think so. Jess, we're, do we have a, Jess, do we have a date? Jess, do we have a date for when we're going to come back uh, and present? Uh, Tentatively, okay. We'll let you know about that, but we're going to bring all those ideas back and, and everything. All the, we're going to make precise drawings, renderings, illustrations, in plan, etc. And we're going to try and bring that, all that back to you at, at, a, at a later day and, and present those ideas. Right? Any questions about the process? Because I'm showing you all about you and like kind of ready to ready, set, and let's go. Let's do it.